Today we're going to create a kinetic drawing inspired by the work of artist Heather Hansen. What you will be needing today is the kinetic drawing paper from your art folder. Now this is going to be the biggest piece of paper in your art folder. I already folded it so it looks like a normal sheet of paper. It might be labeled to say kinetic or it might not actually have a label on it just because it was so big. It should open up and just be like the biggest paper in there. It's going to be bigger than your art folder once you have it open. Now, you're also going to need three different materials to draw with. So I have some pencils, markers, and crayons today. You can use any materials you have at home. You can use pencils, pens, markers, crayons, colored pencils. If you have oil pastels or chalk pastels at home, or even just regular sidewalk chalk, that would be a great option to use because that is more similar to what our artist is using since she is using chalk and charcoal. If you even want to try it with some paint, that would be interesting. So once you have your supplies ready, we can get started. I'm going to start off by opening up my paper and I'm going to hold it horizontally so it is longest going left to right. Okay, now that you can see my whole paper, I have opened it up and unfolded it so it is longest going left to right. It is horizontal. Now we're going to create a kinetic drawing. Kinetic drawing involves creating a picture by using more motion than you normally would when you're drawing. So normally when we're drawing with a pencil or a marker or whatever, we are drawing with our fingers and we're drawing with our wrist. So our wrist is creating the motion and our fingers are creating the motion. Now with this drawing activity, we're going to use our entire arm to create the motion and even like our whole shoulders, like we want to use our entire like upper body essentially to create the motion to create the drawing on our paper. What else is interesting is that we're going to use both hands to draw today. Normally you just draw with your dominant hand. So if you're a lefty, you draw with your left. If you're a righty, you draw with your right. But today we're going to use both hands to make our drawing by having a pencil or pen or whatever we're using in both hands. And we're going to draw at the same time with both of our hands. So when we watched our artist Heather Hansen create her drawings, she had her drawing material in both hands. She actually laid down on the paper and created her drawings on the floor. Our paper isn't big enough for us to lay down on, but if you want to sit on the floor somewhere in your house, or if you want to sit on the floor outside in your driveway or on the sidewalk, that would be a great place to do it so you can really get the full motion with your arms. If you are using a supply that is a little messy, you might want to lay out some newspaper underneath it if you are going to be drawing on the floor somewhere in your house. You don't want to damage your parents' floors. So we're going to create a drawing using both of our hands. Our drawing is going to be non-objective, meaning it is not meant to look like anything. We're just using lines, shapes, colors, and textures to create a design, but it's not going to look like anything from the real world. We're also going to layer our materials today. So we're going to try and layer three different materials or three different colors. So if you don't have three different materials to use, if you don't have like pencils, crayons, and markers, you can pick three different colors and do it that way. I'm going to do three different materials and I think I'm going to do three different colors also. So it's up to you how you want to do that if you have enough materials. If you want to stick with the same color, if you want to do different colors, it's totally up to you. Since we're drawing with both hands, sometimes your paper might try and move around a bit on the table because you don't have anything to hold it down with, especially since we are moving our arms also. So I'm just going to tape down the corners of my paper. If you don't have tape, you can put something heavy like your crayon box or a book on your paper to weigh it down just so it doesn't slide around anywhere. And now I'm going to grab both of my pencils and I'm going to start drawing on my paper. So I'm going to start at the bottom edge. You can start wherever you like. You just want to make sure your right hand and your left hand are starting in a symmetrical spot and they are going to be moving in the same fashion. So I'm going to start down here and move up. Oop, my pencil broke. And now I'm going to create the same motion and I'm moving my entire arms and I'm going to create that over and over again. So I did that same motion for about 30 seconds. Now I'm going to do a different motion, again, to create a different design for another 30 seconds. Now you want to keep doing that same motion over and over again to build your lines, to build your texture. 
and to actually have the design that you're making show up better on the paper. Now that I have all these lines layered on top of each other, you can see it a lot better than if I were to just do one single stroke and then stop there. So now I'm going to make a new design and I'm moving my whole arm to create this pattern. I'm going to do this one for another 30 seconds. So we're going to use each of our materials for about two minutes. So I'm going to try and do four different 30 second designs. Now I'm going to do another motion for another 30 seconds. And now I'm going to do one final motion for another 30 seconds. So then I've done four different motions to create four different designs layered on top of each other with that same material. All right, and now I've finished with my pencils. Now pencil is an interesting material, like the charcoal and chalk that Heather Hansen uses. Pencil can smudge and smear around your paper. So I'm actually going to take my hands and I want to create a different texture on my paper. So I'm going to use my hands and go over the top of my pencil to blend it into my paper a little bit. And that's going to get rid of some of those harsher lines and it's going to create almost like a shaded background. So I'm going to work on just going over the top of my designs with my hands. If you don't want to get your hands messy, you can also use like a tissue. We're just trying to smudge that pencil a little bit to add a softer texture in the background to contrast the harsher texture of some of our lines. All right, and now my hands are super messy, so I'm going to go and wash them before I use my next material. So now that I've finished with my pencil and I'm going to move on to a different material, I think I'm going to do my crayons next. And I'm going to pick, you can pick two different colors, you can pick two of the same colors, it's up to you. I think I want to stick to the like neutral tones that I've got going on. So I'm going to pick black and I have one black crayon in this box and I know I have another black crayon in a different crayon box. So I have two black crayons here that I'm going to use next. So I have one in each hand and I'm going to create some different designs by doing different motions again. So I'm going to do four different designs with my black crayons for 30 seconds each. And that's what my paper looked like after I did four different motions with my black crayons. So I did one that was just straight lines going from diagonals in the corners. I did another one that was almost like a triangle down here at the bottom. I did one that was going straight up and out horizontally on the sides. And then I did another one that was big circles all the way around. Now this is going to start to get interesting because you're going to get to see how your different materials that you chose layer on top of each other. So sometimes certain materials don't mix together very well. So if you did crayon and then you did something like I'm going to use like my water-based markers next, the crayon is going to resist those markers a little bit so it might lead to more smudging. It's not going to look perfect. It's going to get messy and gestural and that's great. We don't want this to look perfect. We want this to be more about the process of making art, going through the motions and creating a non-objective image that is more gestural, is more about our motions and about the process of making it rather than the actual image once we're done. So I'm going to grab my markers and I think I want to use a color for my last section. And what color should I use? I kind of want to use yellow. I don't know if it's going to get weird mixing with the pencil. I do have two packs of markers, so I'm going to grab two yellow markers, one for each hand. If you only have one pack of markers, you can always use two different colors. Even if you do have multiple bags of markers and you want to use a different color in each hand, you can do that too. I'm just sticking to the same colors for right now. And you don't have to hold these like you're holding an actual pencil. If you want to hold it like just with a fist and work it that way, you can do that. Don't press too hard with your markers. And if you are doing this on the floor or on a table in your house, make sure you have something underneath it to protect the surface you're working on in case you go off of your paper at all 
with whatever supplies that you're using. So I'm going to do that same thing where I'm going to go in, make four different designs for 30 seconds each using my yellow markers this time. And that is what my project looked like all finished. So my markers did get a little dirty from the crayon and the pencil that was on my paper. So I'm actually just using a regular piece of paper that's like a scrap to just rub the extra pigment that it picked up from my crayon and from my markers off on that paper. So then my markers are back to normal. So I can put my markers and stuff away. I can untape my paper now that it is finished and my project is done. And I have this really cool, exciting, kinetic, non-objective piece of art. Once you're finished, you guys can take a picture of your kinetic drawing or a video and share it with me on Canvas. You're going to go on our assignment page by clicking the next button and click the blue submit assignment button to send me a photo or video of your project. I can't wait to see the cool non-objective artwork that you guys have created. I hope you had fun with this process. Try your best, have fun, and get creative. I'll see you next week. Bye!